going on, people? This is your boy, The Real Charlemagne, back with a new season of Brick City. Hey, while, you, while I got your attention, go ahead and hit that like, that share. Go ahead and follow me on all platforms. TikTok as well, you know, hey, got to gotta be on the TikTok. But um, today I got some of my partners, they reoccurring guests on the, on the, in the city. I got uh, Mr. Craddock. I got Mr. Forbes. I got mm-hmm. Mr. Allen, Mr. Allen, um, Mr. Forbes. Let me go ahead and get with you. Tell tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, real quick. Well, I'm Trey Forbes. I'm from Aiden, North Carolina. Um, I love working with people. I'm a sociology major, um, so that I come from that perspective. Also, I am a minister, and so I have that perspective as well. I've worked right. with uh, in mental health. For over 25 years. And so I'm glad to be here and be able to have my voice to this conversation. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Mr. Allen, how you doing out there in the Queen City? I am doing well. I'm doing well. Uh yeah, again, I'm Mr. Allen. I'm from the East Eastern North Carolina as well. Um, Aiden, um, Aiden in East Eastern Carolina. And uh my background is uh criminal justice, uh, justice and public policy. And actually, um, I, I do have a passion for, you know, helping the youth and working with the youth. I spent several years working with the youth. Uh, since that time, I've been in, in banking, um, uh, several years in the banking and financial industry. Um, everything kind of leads back to the community, to helping the community, being involved in the community. So I like to just try to stay involved and, um, you know, give back and volunteer whenever I can. Gotcha. Appreciate that, Mr. Allen. Mr. Craddock, last but not least. Hey, look, I'm, totally um, <laughs> and I am a, I'm a human service professional. I have an undergrad in psychology, a master's in professional counseling. I have a passion for working with families to get them to where they want to be in life, not necessarily where you want them to be, but where they want to be. Um, definitely um, an advocate and a, a staunch uh, um partner for fathers. Uh, I, I have a very a deep passion for working with fathers, for working with male adolescents, uh, just to get them to self-actualize and realize their potential and, and be the best person they can be, be it a brother, father, uncle, whatever the case may be, just to be the best person you can be. And I'm glad to be a part of this conversation with a great group of gentlemen. So let's let's get it started. Turn it back get over started. to real Charlotte. <laughs> hey, but look, before we get started, man, look. Kudos to you. Uh, speaking about fathers, you was recognized by a group out of Raleigh. Could you tell us a little bit about that group that recognized you earlier this year? Um, Thank you for that. With your, um, with your achievement? Uh, every year for the last 10 years, I've been a uh, part of the planning committee for the North Carolina Fatherhood Conference. It's held every June, the, the weekend of Father's Day, the Saturday before Father's Day. It's a statewide event, but it's basically concentrated in the Raleigh-Durham area. Uh, we do try to reach out down east and in the Greenville area as well to get some families, some, some fathers to attend. But it's a great uh, one-day um, workshop. We have, have various speakers come in, various uh, panelists come in to talk about uh, positive fatherhood, the responsible fatherhood, and how we can enhance our father, uh, our parenting skills, be it co-parenting with the mother of, the, of your child, be it uh, just the emotional intelligence of, of being a father. How, how do you handle the stresses of being a father and being a, the leader of your household? So that, that that's what the uh, Fatherhood Conference is all about. And then this year I was fortunate and honored to be uh, recognized as one of the trailblazers. Each year they, they select uh, individuals from the community who they feel exemplify uh, positive uh, parenting and father, positive fathering uh, tactics. And I, I've been working with fathers for quite some time. And it's like I said, it's a passion of mine. So I was recognized this year and I appreciate Mr. Uh, Charlemagne being there as one of my guests at the table to, 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 to acknowledge me in this uh, momentous occasion. So I, next year, I, I definitely encourage all of you gentlemen to attend. It's free. Uh, every year is free, but we always have some great speakers. Uh, I think this year we had uh, Judge Vince Rozier from the Wake County, uh, Wake County um, D- Department of Justice. He was a, a guest speaker. And then we also have several um, morning speakers. We had um, Leonardo Williamson, a, a Durham, Durham councilman mm-hmm. that came out and spoke as well. So we always have some of our positive uh, role models 
um, definitely uh, uplifting each other. You know, if you're doing some positive things in your in your community, please continue to do so. Bring some men, bring some fathers with you, and we'd love to have you come out and, and join in the, the activities that we have scheduled each year. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that information because, um, you know, by me atten attending that event, that's actually a great lead in to what we're going to discuss tonight because, you know, fathers of all nationalities is the catalyst of our community. We, we got to have fathers in place. And, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, we, we, we look at the, the, the roles of fathers, everyone look at them different, you know what I mean? And so, uh, you know, I, I, as, a, as a, being a father, I know the importance of being present and, and, and being there, you know, and then, because none of us, none of that comes with a handbook. You know what I'm saying? Being a father doesn't come with a handbook. It doesn't come with a manual that says, okay, page six, deal with Johnny this way. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> so so everybody's leading, you know, and, and they're learning as, as they go, you know. But, uh, you know, but what I want to talk to you guys tonight is, is about accountability uh, when it comes to situations of such parenting uh, relationships, things of that nature. How, and, and the reason this is near and dear to me because of some things I encountered, speaking to the youth and, and just a backstory. So I, I was speaking to a group of, uh, they were the group going to the sixth grade. And um, I, I asked who, who were their best friend. And their best friend was sitting typically right beside them, right? So I was like, so if, you know, uh, Susan does something wrong and you see her do something wrong, do you, do you check Susan? And the young lady was like, no. And I asked another a little gentleman, I was like, hey, hey, John, do you check Jose when um, he's, he's doing something wrong? And they was like, no. I was like, so why not? And um, the, the, the common response was, they're not going to listen to me anyway. <laughs> so it, it goes untouched because they already have the, the motion going and nobody's going to listen to me anyway. So, you know, I want to start with you, Gene. I know you have, you know, a, a, a son older and you see have a daughter still in high school. How do you feel about us holding other parents accountable when they're interacting with your kids about certain situations, how, do you check them or do you just let it slide and you don't say anything about it? How do you, how do you handle those situations when it's something that you feel is like edgy and you, you don't allow that stuff in your household? Do you check them? How do you handle that, Gene? I typically, I check them. Um, a lot of the families that, you know, we've been real fortunate. A lot of the families that we, we deal with or around our children, our children have been together since day one, since, you know, pre preschool and all that. So typically, you know, I, I feel it's important to just we keep each other in check. We keep each other informed, um, you know, in a nice way, nothing aggressive. But mm -hmm. I just let know, hey, my son is not part of that or my son doesn't buy into that. Or, you mm -hmm. know, I know I'll think that our children are saints and, and whatnot. But right. <laughs> I, but, you know, but at some at some point, you got to be truthful about your child. And I feel like a lot, in most cases, I always tell them the truth. You know, my, my child is this, and they're not perfect. I let mm -hmm. them know about their imperfections, but at the same time, I do check them and say, my son doesn't show those type of signs or that type of behavior. Yeah. And people, you know, we use the word check in, in you know, in our community. It's not, and, and, and I think that's the thing, we take the word check out of context as if, if it's always an aggression. Like, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Gene, that it wasn't an aggressive way of, of handling it, but it was more or less, hey, let's let's talk about this thing. Um Tremaine, I know you, you know, you're you're deep in the community. You had an actual uh church service outside because of something you know we were sharing earlier. And um so I know you encounter in the community that your your church is located. I know you encounter a lot of different things. And I know you had an event a couple of years ago where a lot of youth showed up and they over, you know, pretty much overran the adults that was at that at that event but after that i know you you kind of felt discouraged 
how how do you reach back to the community and say, hey, I want to do this again, but I need your help, <laughs> you know, without making people feel guilty or bad about the situation? How do you how do you check people by that in that sense? Right. I, I, I you know, it's it's been difficult because let me go give a little explanation of what you're saying. We we had an event in the community. And we probably had, we went to one of the major project areas um, in Greenville, one of the tougher ones. And um, come to find out there were kids, and one project is there, another project. So we thought that the parents were going to come with the children. Mm -hmm. But what happened was the children came mostly by themselves. They were wide open, and sure enough, um, in the event, some of the kids just, uh, like you just said, uh, 200 plus baby style, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and uh, all of us that grew up knowing about baby, baby, mm -hmm. and we, and the kids probably wouldn't have acted the better parents was, you know, but hey, we're here, and somebody released candy apples, and they want enough for everybody. That's, that's a sign for. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know who, who had that idea. Like, yeah, yeah, we got 40 candy apples a month. So, so then that became kids hitting other people's kids and different things. But what it, it, it showed me, I had to go back to the drawing board. And I said, next time I'm going to have to have some different types of authority present. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have to make it known that the parents um, are, are more than welcome to be there. We that desire to be there. Right. And so with that, whenever we do events now, we make sure that we have enough adults to cover the spread. Gotcha. And most of the time, we don't, we haven't been back to that particular community, but I've seen someone that did go. Mm -hmm. And they had a very beautiful, beautiful event, but they didn't have the crowd that we had because we, man, we had cotton candy, all that right, stuff. Right, right, right. But, but the thing is, um, you look at it, and everybody was talking about how bad the children were. And the first thought came to me was if we can't reach them, if we mm -hmm. have good solid home and we have some resources and we're supposed to know what's right and what's wrong, if we can't reach these kids, what, what chance do these kids have? Right. So then I'm so I reconfigured that we're gonna have the the, the basic answer is have more authority mm -hmm. around we didn't, and I'm trying to think why haven't we done that because of COVID? We're just coming out right, of the right, COVID. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was pre-COVID when we did it. But just having more authority. And and just more hands on to make okay. sure that things or people are where they need to be. Got you, Mister Credit. Hey, you 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 the psychology guy. You always you know you 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 always bring the psychology of things into play. Um, I know you work with a different genre and of uh, uh, people on a day to day basis. It's like you're dealing with issues consistently. Um. And just in your in your position, some people always look at at you as the man per se. Like you, you're coming as as aggression, but I, I know you're not that. But you're just trying to to fix things. So how do how 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 do you, in your professional manner, go to a home that you feel is out of a little out of sync, and address the issues that's going on at home and say, hey, let, let's 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 tidy this up a little bit. <laughs> and, and funny you should mention that, Mr. Charlemagne, that that's exactly the, the, the concept we use. It's, it's more of a buy-in to, to talk to a family and say, what can we do to make this situation better? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not here to, to, to uh, point out uh, what's wrong with the situation. We're trying to enhance what's, what's right about the situation, and we can also make things better. So it's about buy-in. It's about uh, how you approach individuals and, and the relatability of the situation. Um, you're right. You definitely don't want to go in as an authoritative authoritative uh, figure mm -hmm. and telling people like, no, you're wrong for this. No, you're wrong for that. But you want to go in and say, look, you know, um, you know, there's some things we need to work on. And how can we work on this together? Because, you know, I don't have all the answers for everything. You know, you're the expert on your family. You know what your family can do. And I'm here to motivate you to do the right things for your family. Mm -hmm. And the right things are what you choose to do. 
It, it's, it's not what I think is right. It's what you <laughs> think is right for your family. So, mm-hmm. so that's what it is. Mm-hmm. So it's just a matter of buying in and getting fa- families to understand and invest within themselves to, uh, to create uh, a, a social atmosphere that they know, you know, the decision-making skills that they have to make for themselves and their children. Yeah. And it's funny, uh, you bring up Mr. Forbes' uh, situation about the children and whatnot. Uh, that's something we deal with on a regular basis where you where you go enter a household and and the children seem like you know they run in the household so to speak. <laughs> so you have to uh, also just uh, use those teachable moments mm-hmm. uh, to, 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 to teach parents how to be parents a lot of times some parents just don't know how to be parents mm-hmm. you know it, it's a vicious cycle unfortunately a lot of parents uh, want to be the friends of their children rather more so than to be the authoritative or that that disciplinarian that their child needs and so so that that that's what we encounter oftentimes and we, we talk to families about positive parenting um progress and positive parenting programs mm-hmm. and we talk about five protective factors we talk about um the social emotional competence of children teaching your children to self-regulate their own emotions Mm. Just like Mr. Forbes says, you know, if you got 40 candy apples and 200 kids, somebody's going to be upset and somebody's going to be trying to snatch somebody's <laughs> candy apple. We have to teach our children that's not appropriate. You know, you have to regulate yourself and say, look, you know, I didn't get one this time. You know, maybe someone's willing to share one. But, you know, to go up and take somebody's candy apple, you know, that, that that's, that's going to be some, some uh, <laughs> conflict right there, some conflict resolution. Right. And, and that's not the lesson we're trying to learn today. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. And, and those, like I said, those are teachable moments when, when things like that happen. You know, you, and, and like, at the moment, you're like, oh, man, we need, we got to figure this out real quick. But however, out of those moments become teachable moments and and, 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 and learning moments, i.e. For, for Mr. Forbes there at the time, he, he learned and said, hey, I need to put more people in place next time I have this event. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, man. But um, I, I I like what both of you, all three of you guys said, you know. And I think um, you know, just dealing with me and I look at my youth, you know, um, being raised, you know, Tremaine, Gene, and I, we all grew up in the same neighborhood, and we was talking about. I know we we have conversations about the Iron Fist, you know, the Iron Fist approach, and I, and I, and you know, I think that approach. Per se doesn't work anymore. <laughs> no. You have to, you have to, you have to. What they say, you you attract more bees with honey. You know. <laughs> you Can I speak to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You 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 may you may you may. I I, I saw something recently, mm-hmm. and this guy was talking. I, what it was, I know. I got a. I had a guy I work with. Mm-hmm. He was very militant. This man loved his children. Mm-hmm. He always talked about how he wanted to provide for his children when he didn't have having parents that both were on on substance. Right. And but he was a very hard person. When he talked, he talked hard. Mm-hmm. And uh, this was this was actually in the juvenile detention center. Right. Very hard. Mm-hmm. And I understood him because he just didn't have. He grew up rough. Right. And so. What ended up happening, I go and look at the young man, his son's page, and I know this young man's father. Let me say that. Mm -hmm. I know this young man's father. The young man had put up a video that that was talking, and it said, why is it that it seemed like... Now, I I have a... I don't completely agree with the video, so I'm going to backtrack on it. But saying, why is it that women can go up, uh, that a mama can say something to the child and the child respond in a positive way. But then when a man, uh, when a man always, when a man comes out and says, I'm the, I got the strength, I got the power, I'm the, I'm the head, I'm this, I'm that, mm-hmm. I'm stronger than you, bigger than you. But then when the kid gets big enough and say, okay, now you're not stronger than me, now you're not bigger than me. Right. Now you got a problem. Right. Now, two things I, I would want to say, but in the dynamic, was the father in the home? Mm-hmm. And surely this boy that put it up there, because he put up there, yeah, that that was my that's my takeaway. The other thing is, we don't want to go and try to say that I'm a, that might means right, mm-hmm. and that because I got the power, I got the authority, so you do what I say. But mm-hmm. we want to do something where we condition our young people 
to know that we love you, know that our heart is ahead of our, our hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Heart is ahead of our hand. Right. And so in our discipline, they need to be able to see that daddy didn't tell you don't go run out in the street because I didn't want you to have a good time. I right. didn't want you to run out in front of the car because they want you to get hit and die. Right. And it didn't say, don't you on the phone court, the phone court or the television court, uh, because it looked and you said that thing that tastes like licorice. So daddy <laughs> said it. <laughs> daddy said it because I love you. Right. And so we gotta connect, make sure that we don't make and, and I always had a little thing I used to say. I would tell fathers this rules without relationship breeds rebellion. Right. Rules without relationship breeds rebellion. You ask them for it. because relationship shows that I care, and that's that's what I'm trying to connect. Mm-hmm. And so that's one way. Even with my sons, I found times when they really made me mad, and I just wanted to say, forget all y'all. <laughs> uh, take this crash and throw it out, and get in the car and keep on rolling. Right. I had to say, I got to keep talking to them so I can discover where the the thought process is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then they explain my heart about what's going on in the situation. Gotcha. Yeah, that's like you said, I, I think that the iron fist method is is that is it's not dead <laughs> per se, but like you said, you have to build a relationship so you could get them to that point where you like, okay, now I got you. Let let let's work. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, i.e. Deion Sanders. I think, you know, this this past weekend showed us what tough love can do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, I, and I think he gave the boys a lot of tough love. And, 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 and you see, he, he shocked the world with what he did. Now, if he could continue shocking the world, that's going to really be awesome. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I think that that, that tough love concept actually worked but it wasn't an iron fist love like you said he built that relationship he bought you know bought into that trust you know say hey trust me i got you and and i'm gonna take you with me and um i think that goes back to accountability you know because like you said he was when he did his pregame he was talking about the person beside him holding your, your, your everybody's accountable if you miss a tackle hey you you hurting everyone else and I, I think, you know, we we got to become more accountable in our communities. I know, Gene, you, you're big on that, man. I know you, uh, you know, you work in the banking industry. Someone, you know, out there, you know, working in the banking industry, miscalculate something, that throws everything off. Y'all, y'all, y'all be an audit and everything. So that nice, nasty way, how do how do, in, the, in the workplace, being a, a, a you you jeans you like six six. How how do you handle approaching individuals in the workplace and like, hey, we 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 got to clean up clean up this mess a little bit without yeah, stand over them and <laughs> pound them. Yeah. Look without putting <laughs> look without putting the fear of God in them. How do you do that, Gene? <laughs> I think it's kind of like uh, what Mister Craddock said and what what Tremaine said. You know, it's that relationship from day one. When you establish, just like you with your children, that relationship of trust, right, of understanding of, you know, sometimes a hierarchy, you need to establish a hierarchy. Like, uh, again, I'm not your friend, as Mr. Crowder said, I'm not your friend, but I'm your kind of like authority authority figure here. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if I am in authority, but if we're peers, we I address them as peers. But mm-hmm. from day one, you have to lay your, your, put your foot down there and say, hey, this is our relationship. I'm going to, I'm going to come to you, you know, let them know that you're going to try to keep it. 100%, you know, honest when you deal in communications and you kind of feel people out and see where they are. And I think sometimes you have to communicate with people on the level that they are on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No matter what you think, you know, some people are not good listeners. Some people are overly emotional or whatever. So you have to communicate with them on that level. If they're not a good listener, that means you got to say things a couple of, t- you know, different times. You know, if they're emotional, that means you got to kind of say it in a different way. And that's not like you're candy coating it, but it's just, uh, you know, of course, in my past, I worked with uh, conflict resolution. And then Mr. Craddock mentioned that. But it's how you say things and it's the words you use sometimes can turn people, you know, offensive or defensive or whatever. It can make them uh, buy in or not buy in based on how you how you say things. So mm-hmm. it's this 
about, you know, kind of like it's not candy coating it, but it's being firm with people. But it's, it's telling them, you know, what things are non-negotiable, what I will kind of like work with or what I can do to, you know, because you don't always want to come out like you're telling somebody you did wrong. But you want to say, hey, if this happened to me, this is what I would do. Sometimes you put it in your uh, uh, on you as well. You know what mm -hmm, I mean? Mm -hmm. And just be honest, listen to what position they're in, get all the facts and just be honest about what needs to happen. How can we make it better? And and then buy in. I'm willing to help make it better, too. If I could do anything to help you, I got your back. If I, we can research something or do something to change it, I got your back. Not I'm just telling you you did wrong and you got to live with it. No, I'm here to help. And mm -hmm. I think more people be like that. We got to be offering help to everybody whenever we can, not always giving them something in their hand, but giving them a kind word or a firm word or some information they can use um, other than just giving them money or giving them something like that, but giving them something they can use, some knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's my, mm -hmm. my take on it. Now, look, fellas, um, look, this is open to anybody who wants answers. Now, what, what I, look, I just heard everything you just said, Gene, and, and um, I respect everything you just said, but <laughs> an individual see us first, right? <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then how how you know they 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 already see us and like you said I'm you know I'm a big boy so I, the first thing I walk in the room is like yo okay if this dude get out of out of hand how are we gonna handle him you know what I'm saying that's that's right. the first thing you know what I'm saying so do do you guys feel we have to dumb ourselves down in a sense to 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 like you said get those uh, reinforcements across without f the the everyone feeling threatened by us, you know, because our parents are already threatened out the gate. So how so? What do you think about that? Do you have to dumb yourself down, or, or how do you how do you feel about that? I, I'd like to go first on that. It's a matter it's a matter of the mindset. You have to change a person's perception of you because they already have that preconceived notion as of, of you as a threat. And you have to let them know that, you know, I'm, I'm not here as a physical presence a presence to uh, intimidate you. I'm here to work uh, collaboratively with you for the greater good of whatever we, whatever goal we have set for our organization. That's something we deal with. That that's something in, in, in current um, society and current organizations. We have uh, diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion, DEI. Mm -hmm. That seems to be uh, the trend. I'm sure Mr. Gene can speak to that. Mr. Allen can speak to that. That that's the trend across all business aspects and organizations, you know, because you, you're you're changing the the bias and, and the, the the perceptions that uh, individuals have, and those those are personal biases. So you, regardless of what you do professionally, you just have to connect with that person to let them know I'm not here as a physical threat. I'm here to work collectively with you mm -hmm. to achieve whatever goal we have set for. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Well, you know, Tremaine, like I, I know you, look, I know you, look, Tremaine, you was over there, you was, you was itching. Uh oh, what's go ahead, and let it, let it out, bro. No, I, I totally, <laughs> agree. I totally, I totally agree. One thing that I do try to do is, I like if I'm proximity, sometimes, you know, sometimes to give people space, literally, mm -hmm. um, to sit down, you know, sometimes it's better to see people see that you're calming down, mm -hmm. and that you're that you're not coming at them sometimes i have to redefine because it's it's so funny people say why are you yelling at me and i'm like i'm not even yeah I, 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 I said listen to me i'm talking at the same pace that i've been talking no you're no you're not i'm not i trust my hair because i i knew that you probably would think i was yeah mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. sometimes a, a smile a open kind of sitting open and not too you know cramped up kind of mm -hmm. help out but definitely sometimes i might have this just kind of take a posture where I'm trying to stay stay calm, mm -hmm. try not to cross anybody up because sometimes that that has been a thing I've had had going. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's good to just kind of you feel like, man, I, I'm going to one up on you. I see where I can cross this thing up on you real quick. Right. But just showing that I'm here for you. If mm -hmm. I'm at work, I'm here for the company and for you. Right. If I'm at church, I'm here for you spiritually. Mm -hmm. If I'm in the home that daddy ain't power tripping, husband ain't power tripping, it doesn't matter to me uh, who's going to win this argument. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Let's let the best idea win. Right. Let's let the let's let the highest. I'm not arguing to be right. I'm just trying to let's find out what's right versus who's right. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, and and so because I found out, you know, you can kind of come in high. Even with my, I, I remember <laughs> um, recently, I tried. My son just graduated. I got my youngest boy just graduated, mm-hmm. and. He automatically, as soon as he, he just turned 18, just graduated, and I was leaving. I didn't want to really leave him home. He has, uh, there was a young lady he liked, don't stay far from my house. Oh. And I said, boy, I'm, I'm asking for it. I'm going to be gone for seven days. And first, I was going to make him leave with her. But I said, really, at this age, he can leave at any time, and I can't, ain't nothing I could do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then I put it back in his hands. And he chose to come with us, but he was really. And I said, "Son, I'm not trying to make you." I said, "You choose." Mm-hmm. His mama didn't like that, but I'm glad he just kind of. <laughs> no, I was like, "Look, you you can do this, you can do that." Now, certain things you ain't gonna be doing while I'm I'm not here, right? And then he just chose the side that I needed him to come on. But right. if he didn't, I would just have to live with the fact that he's grown and he could do whatever, what the he want to do, right? And let me a, ask a, you this, Keith. Yes. You, gotcha. <laughs> you, how were how did you manage as a father, mm-hmm. as your children, and you have taught them so well because you've been a good dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see, Keith, every time I turned around, he was in somebody's car going to some sporting event, <laughs> supporting his children here and there. So as a, a great parent that you are, how did you re- how did you figure out I have to release them and let them be adults? Man, that was honestly that was um me as a youth. You know, I I think a lot of times we were thrown to the to the to the world. Um, you know, it, it wasn't the fact that our parents didn't know. It was the fact that they, the fact that they were working, they they were engaged doing other things, trying to supply for us. So we was kind of thrown in the fin for ourselves a little bit at times. Um, and I I basically redirected my, my children and talked to them. And I didn't sugarcoat anything about life. I, I kept everything transparent because life, when they walk out these walls with me, is going to be very transparent. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't want to sugarcoat anything. I didn't want to let anything be unscathed unnoticed and i was very very frank with them and honest with them about how things move in life and and it it took breaking things down to even the street way of conversating with them but i let them know i'm the parent and like even to this day they still you know and they 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 might slip and say something sorry you know what i'm saying because they still know they respect me as their dad and and I think I think that's what allowed me to uh, allow them to grow up the way they did and to be where they are now because they go anywhere. I got <laughs> my, my youngest son is in Denver. You know, he 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 just hopped up and, and left. It was like people was like, "Who's out there with him?" I'm like, "No one." But I, as a father, I felt confident enough. I raised him properly to be able to adjust and to adapt to those things. And um that was that was uh uh that was my main thing just just being transparent with them Tremaine. That that's the main thing because um I think sometimes as parents we try to shelter and sugarcoat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the world's not going to sugarcoat anything for us. That's and, true. But without without them having to experience it like we did firsthand I'm I'm already preparing them for that argument that they're gonna have with the friend, the the fight that they're gonna see at at the party, the dude that's gonna offer them some drugs, the 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 girl that's gonna offer him something in the back room, the dude that's gonna try to get her into the back room. I already I already had those conversations, and, and like I said, being look being a hundred, being transparent. I told my daughters, I said, if you want to talk to a player, talk to your dad. I said, because y'all only six months apart. 
you know what I'm saying? It's nothing that I'm proud of, but it was a reality. You know what I mean? And and they and they know that. They knew that they were all perceived once apart. But like I said, I told somebody, I tell somebody that, you know, they was like, you had four kids in two years. Yes, I had four kids in two years. <laughs> but I took on the responsibility once they were here. I never said, hey, it ain't mine. I ain't run, I'm running away from it. I hit it head on. You know what I'm saying? But so you gave them a mental vaccination. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you know, but hey, it it, it worked out. <laughs> it worked out. Really uh, did. You know, um, and that's and you know, I think that that was me being accountable to myself because I could have shot away and, and said I was, you know, the great, the great dude and this, then the fourth, you know, and blah, 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 blah. But I, I had it, I had exposed my flaws to them to get my point across. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's what I did. But, um, you know, but look, look back to the original question. I'm, I'm glad you asked that, Tremaine, dude. But, you know, sometimes, like, like all three of you guys said, you know, you have to, you know, do conflict resolution internally. How does that affect you? Because someone already has a preconceived notion about how you coming at them, and how and how does that affect you internally? And anyone can answer this question: that you you are not a threat, you're not you're not even thinking about posing a threat to them. But and then but you even have to go like Train. You said you had to initiate a smile or initiate something else to deflect who you are to get your point across. How does that make you feel internally? How do you guys process that? Anyone else? You just have to um you have to check yourself, so to speak. You have to be mm -hmm. uh, be aware how you conduct yourself and mm -hmm. how you present to others. Because you, you, you want to change that 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 dynamic and that concept of how they view you. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to change who you are, but you want to change their perception of you so they don't view you as a threat. So you definitely have to uh, be mindful of that and definitely have to work on your internal skills of how how am I being portrayed or how am I being seen by others? You know, sometimes you have to be uh, slow to speak. You know, <laughs> you know how we are, you know, just like to Tremaine's point, you know, sometimes we get a little excited. Sometimes the, the voice gets a little louder. I mean, it doesn't mean that we're yelling at somebody, but. It is it's it's perceived that we're yelling at you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to be mindful of, of those tactics. You know, sometimes just like you said, you know, even if you're sharing some bad news, sometimes you have to smile about it. Mm -hmm. So they they won't, you know, get that uh perception like you're always the bearer of bad news, you're always, you know, being being too critical of individuals. So you yeah. have to definitely learn to uh change your communication styles up depending on who you're talking to. And to Mr. Allen's point about uh about people receiving information in different um different um mediums, you know, you might have to write some things down. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes if you talk to somebody and, and they don't get it from it from auditorily by, by listening to you, sometimes they need a visual. Sometimes you have to write it down. <laughs> so, so you, you have to uh, teach to, to a person's learning style, so to speak. Yeah. But all, all that's in the, uh, in, involved in the communication and in, in the work and environment, even in the community, you know, depending mm -hmm. on who you're working with in the community. So you have, we want to make sure that you reach the population and make sure that the message is well received. Yeah. So that, that's just my, my take on it, gentlemen. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Gene Tremaine? You said something to me. Yeah, I said, do you? I said, how how do you feel? Do you feel in, internally when you when you feel like you do have to redirect who you are to to appease someone's psyche towards you? Oh, I don't like it. Oh, <laughs> comrade, I don't like it. Right, uh, co comrade, I really don't. Some not everything we do is gonna be like some things are second nature, mm -hmm. but because all of us are thinkers, man, we 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 just kind of hung together mm -hmm. and we you know we i'm glad to are you going they out are very, pretty much successful mm -hmm. and doing well in their fields but sometimes you you have to almost pull back who you are you got to recognize that you're not 
you can't be in Superman mode all the time because you just tear everything up. Think right. It's easy to tear something up. Sometimes you got to go Clark Kent mode mm -hmm. and just kind of dumb it down. You got the same amount of power, but you pull it back so that you can make sure that the point is understood. You don't want to lose what you're trying to communicate. Um, I call it this. Uh, that There's a term. The, uh, the Bible says speak the truth in love. Mm -hmm. And I call that care fronting. Care front, not confronting, care mm -hmm. front. I'm speaking the truth to you, mm -hmm. but I got to gauge how much truth truth you get. And I know I, I know what you're saying about not sugarcoating. Right. Um, but sometimes I found out that some medicines are real strong. Mm -hmm. And and if you're dealing with somebody who's not on a mature level. Sometimes you might have to drop drop a little bit of that cherry flavor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Still strong, just as strong as it was before. Right. But just to make sure that they palate and take it, because mm -hmm. you, the, the whole the whole point of holding someone accountable, you want them to be able to uh, take it in and adapt to it mm -hmm. and, and and get better. Right. The process. Yeah. So that that's kind of my thought to it. Got you. Got you. How about Gene, anything you want to add to that? I, I just, you know, kind of want to say, um, I think Ms. Craddock was saying, you have to look at yourself sometimes. I think a lot of people won't stop and look at themselves and really analyze their self. Um, I call it self-introspection. It's some word I made up. I don't know if it exists, but <laughs> I, know, <laughs> I know he mentioned self-actualization as well. But I think, you know, we never figured out what that was in class uh, to be truly self-actualized. But you have to always have a goal to be better, right? Mm -hmm. And everything you, um, how can I be better? How can I say it better? Um, you know, I guess it's considered emotional intelligence. What, what am I, you know, who am I portraying myself as? Because sometimes people will tell you, you know, who they see you as, but then you have to always say, you know, who am I? You know, who am I? And I spend a lot of time looking at myself, making sure that I'm sending the right message and I'm being the right person, that my children see me as the right person, that my community sees me as the right person. Uh, and then to, to, to Tremaine's point, sometimes I don't like it. Sometimes I don't like the fact that because of my emotional intelligence or, or my thought process, I want to be better and I want to look at myself. And a lot of people don't have that same idea in their mind. That's what I don't like, you know, mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. you don't take time to see how you come across. So you don't you don't care how you know, whose feelings you hurt. You just kind of go out there like a bull in a china shop. But <laughs> so, but when you want to be better for yourself, you know, internally, you have to do those things. And I think that's kind of where it starts, want to be better and just trying to analyze myself to make sure I'm coming across the right way. Got you. That's, that's, that's good. Can, can, I can I tell you something, Keith? Go ahead. I, I was thinking about, I, I had a situation come up and when my children... But I, I guess you we always talk to our children from a success point. Not mm -hmm. to say we, I say me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of times you're like, you know, I graduated from yada, yada, I did this. I was able to get a house at the age of 23. I was able to blah, blah, blah. And you're going through that. And at one point, I think I started putting out so much at my children that I started to know. Mm -hmm. And how I messed up. And I had to read calibrate and like Gene said when we were talking about self introspection it is a word um it you have to sometimes consider have when you consider how you been how you attempted how you could have messed up how you have messed give you compassion because mm -hmm. I have messed up so many times I've messed up more times than I was uh, right sometimes right. but between that I learned from it and I had to keep moving Right, right. And so you have compassion on people. Sometimes I, I was sitting there watching 60 Days In, and I was thinking, God, you know, and, and anybody that don't know what I'm talking about, I was looking at all these people making mistakes, the young men in there, and I just thought about it. I said, a lot of these young folks just ain't never had nobody in their corner that didn't look at them as somebody to use. The drug dealer saw them as somebody that could sell and not get the time that they would get, you know, and all this other stuff. Somebody mm -hmm. always took advantage of them. Boyfriend comes in the house, eat all the peanut butter and jelly cereal while mom, while he's sitting out there doing whatever he's doing to mama. And I can't say nothing. 
And so now I, I in turn, instead of me having compassion on if I come into a house where somebody else had children already, I pull the same Captain Caveman, Incredible Hulk stun on them, a big bad whoop stun, and I didn't have compassion. Gotcha. So a lot of times we have to have compassion on them. Right. And uh, uh, yeah, grace, the grace and space, grace and space. That's that's, that's, right. that's something that I, I, um, I think you know a lot of people need at times, um, to, to allow them to process. And I think sometimes we, we get so caught up in getting our point across. Everybody doesn't process the same. It's just like our computers, our CPU, our functionality of a computer is not the same across the board. You know, mine might might my might, might run faster than yours. You know, so sometimes we want people to process immediately and it's not it's not feasible for them at that moment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we so we do have to allow grace and space. Um uh even though like it's as, as a me as a parent, I still gotta get my point across. <laughs> <laughs> because that you know I, I you know that's just sometimes it's just like how what things that's embedded in you and then like you said you try to analyze yourself and you're like mm, this approach ain't working so then that's when you kind of step back and reanalyze the situation and then revisit and then and then go from there but um but yeah man um I'm about to get ready to close but I want you guys to have some last words real quick you know, and just talk about anything you got coming up, any uh, events, social things, um, or any projects you're working on you want to share with the audience or uh, share your information, you know, so if anyone want to reach out to you, you know, about some topics or if they want you to have a speaking engagement, please share your information with, with the audience. Uh, Gene, you could go first for me, please. Uh, yeah, just in closing, I just want to say, you know, it's a pleasure being here with the gentleman today, you know, keep doing what you're doing in the community. Um, currently, I don't have any events coming currently, um, maybe in December, but I'll, I'll have more details about that at a later date. But again, you know, just keep being putting your your best self forward. I feel like, um, you know, you guys have a good handle on that, but multiply yourself, duplicate yourself. Anytime you can reach out to other people or a young man and just kind of pull them to the side and say, I know people always say that and sometimes it work or don't work, but just keep shooting your shot, man. And um, adults need it too. There's some broken men as uh, Mr. Craddock and Tremaine uh, both said, there's some broken men out there who don't have the direction that we have or have seen what we have or experienced what we have that need that someone to just touch them on the shoulder and say, Hey, this, you're going the wrong way about it. You know, as we said before, holding each other accountable. So let's continue to just work on that, man. You guys uh, and be blessed. There you go, Tremaine. Go ahead. Yes. Um. Well, I have a radio show that I have that comes on 106.9 FM. It also you can see it on Roku Television. Um. Real Talk for Real Men. It's on YouTube, Facebook, a whole lot of platforms. Um. Different ways. Uh. 10, 10 a.m. on Thursday morning. Um. And where we just kind of have real conversations with men. And uh, so. I want to encourage everybody, just keep on plugging. Keep, keep doing what you can do that's effective. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. We are our brother's keepers. I, I would say this. Um, I was just thinking about, I was at Atlantic Beach um, on 4th of July. There was a Caucasian young man, uh, an African-American young man, like his biracial. And it was a truck. We're going to pull into a parking lot to watch her. Some man jumps in front of them, a grown man, a Caucasian man, jumps in front and start yelling and screaming and trying to keep them out of the parking lot. Make a long story short, when I got out of the car, like you said, Keith, he saw me get out of the car. He started backing up because he didn't know what I was coming to do. But what I, what I did, I got there. I told the young man, I said, look, you don't know him. He don't know you, sir. You don't know them. Let's not make each other make it so that we all would know each other forever through a bad decision, whether somebody end up getting hurt. I said, you know, and I just kind of talked them out of all the anger they had or, you know, and then the police came up. So that just kind of put the icing on the cake. 
but we have to be accountable to each other, accountable to our community. Let's try to do what we can. Let's try to reproduce that in someone else. Gotcha. Appreciate it. I, I think I caught the end of it. <laughs> All right, what's credit? Uh, you can reach me on social media at the Coaching MHC for mental health counselor. The Coaching MHC. I have an Instagram page and I also have uh, Twitter or X is what this is being called now. But the Coaching <laughs> MHC. Um, to uh, Mr. Allen's point and Mr. Forbes' point, you know uh, Booker T. Washington. Was it? Uh, is it Booker T. Washington? Yeah, it was Booker T. Washington that said it's easier to build strong children than repair broken men. Frederick Douglass. Oh, Frederick Douglass? Okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> Frederick Douglass. Um, but uh, both are possible. Um, both are possible. But we want to be tangible role models for our children, for our youth. And we want to be tangible role models for our, our, our fellow man. So we definitely want to be there for, for our, our community and hold each other account, accountable to be responsible for our actions and the decisions that we make. So just be mindful of that, gentlemen, going forward. You know, um, if you make a bad decision, that doesn't necessarily make you a bad person. That just gives you an opportunity to uh, make a difference in your community and grow from the challenges that you're faced with on a daily basis. So let's be mindful of that. Go forth, uh, be a pillar of your community, and make a positive impact on someone's life today. Got you. Appreciate them, brothers. Hey, it's always been a pleasure, man. But you guys always share the wealth of knowledge. Like we're definitely gonna have you back soon. Um, you look individually or collectively again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, hey, more hey, you guys stay positive. Y'all keep me motivated. You know what I'm saying? I'm having a rough day. I'm like, Mr. Craddock gonna come through with something. Tremaine gonna come through with something. With Gene, I can always count on y'all for something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and look, you don't even know it. Then some days I look, I get a text or something. It'd be a, a joke or a, a meme or something crazy. But I, I really appreciate you guys, man. You know, I said everybody, you know, it, life is about balance. You know, we, we got to have moments of serious situations. And then we, we got to have some humor, some laughter, you know, in, in the same time. So it's, it's okay to laugh and joke and, and not be stern all the time. You know, a lot of a lot of people think, hey, you a stern man. You... You know, I, you know, it depends on the situation. You know what I'm saying? So, but uh, but yeah, man, I really appreciate you guys coming up here, kicking off this new season. And um, all the listeners out there, make sure you follow me on other platforms. Check out my other podcast, which is over and out. It's it's catered to veterans, but feel free to listen. Um, if you know any veterans out there, tell them to check out Over and Out Veterans Podcast. And that's on all platforms. The website is the same. Also, um, if you're interested in being on um, Brick City, go to uh, www.brickcityshow.com. Click on the button that says contact us and uh, fill out the questionnaire. Hey, maybe we could work it out so you could be on Brick City at some point. You know, I want to have you have you here, share your story, share your product, your business. Also, when it comes to advertising, do the same thing. Go to Brick City Show. Dot com, click on the questionnaire. Hey, let's connect. Let's advertise. I want you know. I want to build a strong community for everyone. You know, like I said, our community first because we we kind of lack it behind. So I want to pull them up by the bootstraps. But a hey, community is, is based off of everyone. So feel free, everyone, reach out to me. I'm, I'm willing to talk. But um. Until next time, people, it's the real Charlemagne signing off. Y'all be good. Peace.